Welcome to the deeper well.
together tonight we ask that you'll just anoint this message in Jesus name amen Pushing every button but everything. There we go. All right, jeez. Oh, let me tell you. All right, we're still in our series. We'll go with that right now. Um, it's kind of interesting. Um, um, as we as we continue in this series, are you prepared to go? Um, it, it's kind of interesting because as I was sitting down and I was getting everything together, the the Lord said. I got a question for you. I said, yeah, what's that? He goes, how do you walk on water? And I said, well, I said, very carefully. <laughs> and he went, no, 
I'm going to explain to you. You know the answer. You just don't know how to put it into the right context. And so as I sat down, I, I just kind of listened to the Holy Spirit speak to me, and, and this is what he gave me. So, Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for you who, in your grace and mercy, Father, have found a way to save us who are wretches. Father, thank you for your unconditional love, Father. Thank you for your word, Lord, that gives us directive in the ways that we should go, Lord. And Father, helps us to have an understanding of what goes on in the world today. We thank you, Father. We love you and we praise you. Open the eyes and ears of our hearts. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen and amen. So again, you asked me, how do you walk on water? And, and then, so I'm going to ask you this question. Have you ever walked on water? Now, not with a surfboard, not in a boat, but literally walking on water. Now, you're going to find this interesting tonight um, because it's not a surfing reference. Um, even though many that, you, that surf use that metaphor, it's not that. Think Peter when he was called out of the boat. All right, think Peter when he was called out of the boat. He didn't even think twice. He, he just stepped over the boat and he began walking on water. See? He, he walked in the will of God. And, and that's, that's the first step in walking on water. The Lord says, hey, look, I want you to do this. And, and it's to come out of the boat. It's to walk on water towards me, trusting me, keeping your eyes focused on me, and watch what happens. And, and here's what's happening today in the world. We're watching people take the focus off God and put the focus on themselves. And what happened when Peter put the focus on himself and what might happen to him? He sank. He sank. See? So again, what if I told you that walking on water is walking in the will of God according to his word. Again, Peter, Jesus said, come. Come towards me, Peter. Peter just leapt out of the boat, walked by faith, not by sight, and walked towards Jesus. And then he got caught up in self. And you know, we're seeing that a lot in the world today. We're seeing a lot of self in the world. And you know, we're not walking in the will of the Lord. Now, let me take this one step further. I, 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 I understand that I can't do anything in my ability. All right? That, that I understand that I have no ability and no strength, so to speak of. But there is another that is in that same boat. And he decides to join you. And so what happens? There becomes a communion. So let me, let me put this into perspective. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. In my secular nature, I can't do anything. I try. And I, and I look out and I go, oh, that was great. And then people around you go, no, not so much. Not so much. No, that was substandard. That wasn't that good. But let's say you're, you're, you know, you're Peter, and you know, we know that the other disciples were in the boat, and y you know that you know, one of them was sitting there, oh, man, I wish I could be Peter. Until Judas says, hey, dude, let me hold your wallet in case you sink and it gets wet. But all of a sudden, you know, he doesn't get out. Now, there's a funny thing. In, in this, all right, in this boat where Peter was, there were other disciples. And they were communing with each other before this. And, and they were trying to understand what was happening and what was going on. 
And as they spoke, they, they came to this decision, you know, in ourselves, we can't be out here doing this. How are we doing this? And one goes, it's because of him. It's because of him. When, when, now, you got to understand, when he's pointing, he's pointing at Jesus, who's now standing in the water, calling Peter out. See? And in that conversation, as we see many times with the disciples, there's a communion that builds each other up. That builds each other up. And, and that is so important. That is so important. Because see, in that communion that builds each other up, the conversation turns from, see what I've done, you know who I am, look at all the things I've accomplished, and it turns to, I can't believe we're out here with this crazy guy who's walking on water who's called Peter out of the boat. Wow, what's going on? Hmm. Uh. And they say, wow, our lives have become purposeful. Not for us, but for him. You know, when they were all standing there and Jesus came to the last place where he, where he talked to all his apostles at this time because they went from disciples to apostles, and he goes, go. And now they know they can go. And now they know they have purpose to go. And now they know why they go. And they all stepped out of the boat. And they all started walking on water. Even though they knew it wasn't them. See, we, we, every time I get the opportunity to witness who Christ is in my life, I step out of the boat and I start walking on water. Because I know it has nothing to do with me. I'm only capable of doing what I do because the Lord, with, through the Holy Spirit, has given me everything I need. And we'll talk about that Sunday has given me everything I need to do what he has called me to do. When the disciples, when they were in the upper room and they're arguing about each other, they still don't know what their purpose is. They're going, why? They don't even know Jesus is in front of them. No idea. So what is it about? It's all about them. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? See? But later on, it became a communion of disciples, of brothers, of friends, building each other up. And so the conversation is no longer about them, but it's about God, and it's about Jesus. And the Spirit is there in them, leading them to the places that Jesus has called. That communion, like I said, is so important because this conversation and communion turns from, from self and turns to purpose, his purpose, because we're all under the same grace. And if we're all under the same grace, there's a spiritual communion that transcends the physical, which turns the negative into a positive because it cannot believe that we're serving God with no ability but trusting him in every step of the way. See? I, you know, I, it's so funny. I, you know, I, we, Crystal got a text from Debbie. I won't be at church tonight and I'm going to Shemaine. And she goes, no, she's in mass going to Orville's Boy Scout thing. And, and I said, here's, <laughs> here's a person that's the furthest away calls and says she's not going to be there tonight. And I'm sorry if this offends some people, but there are people five minutes away that aren't here today. See? And Debbie lives in Massachusetts, New York, Massachusetts border. Not by my might, but by his strength, can I get off the couch and come to church? Honestly, 
One of the things that I noticed where we were last weekend in, in Rabbi Khan's church is the community. The co I mean, on a Friday night, 8 o'clock, and the place is absolutely packed with people. Not because of who they were, but because of who he is. See? And, 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 and the communion with the Holy Spirit surrounded around the praise and worship of God was absolutely astounding. One mind, one heart, one soul. See? And now, now I know a lot of these people, they were working all week. And I'll tell you what, we didn't get out of there till 11. And you know what? Not one person, oh, it's late. No, oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The graciousness of God being poured out when there's no ability, when there's no strength. Grace upon grace upon grace. Now, in every step of the way, I can't believe that God has called me to serve him with no ability but trusting in him every step of the way. And in that, finding amazing joy. See? Amazing joy. You know, I, I, I get home and it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, let's go to church. And, and the Lord just goes, remember, not by your might, but by, not by your strength, but by mine. I will do what you need to have done. You just continue to walk in the joy of the Lord. Because in the joy of the Lord, the, the, the fruit is being produced. The fruit is being produced in joy. Enjoy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, I'm so tired. I, I just want to go to bed. Oh, Lord, give me strength. And he gives me strength. You know, I'm, I'm used to going to bed at 8.30 at night. Here we are. We're rolling around 11 o'clock. And, and, and just the joy of the Lord is just keeping me awake. As a matter of fact, I didn't even get to sleep that night till 3 o'clock in the morning. Three hours before I had to go eat breakfast and jump in a van and drive back. Because I was so full of his ability, his strength, his grace, his mercy. None of mine. Because I'll tell you, my body was saying, hey, you know what time it is? You're driving 300 something miles in a, in a few hours. And I'm going, yeah, yeah. But I just get pro processing. Wow, Lord, I'm sitting here at 1030. I'm praising your name. We're, we're talking to people we don't even know, but it's like we've known them for years. See, not by, not by my ability. But see, the communion of the Holy Spirit is a sweet thing. It's a sweet thing. I can remember when I was a youth pastor. And, and we would go and we'd constantly run. And I've told you the stories about it. But I, but I remember running and then spending all night talking to the teenagers. I remember we went down to Springfield, Mass. We went to a youth rally. We, we went skiing all day. We did a teen service. And then all of a sudden we're, we're, we're sleeping next door in a... Amvets Hall, all the boys are downstairs in the kitchen and the dining area on tables sleeping, while the girls are upstairs in, in the, the meeting area. And at one point, we could hear them, it's probably 12.30 at night, and the boys weren't sleeping, so we all went upstairs, sat around in a circle, and did a Bible study till almost 4 in the morning. And we had to get up and 
go to church the next morning. It's the communion of everybody that knows it's not them. And in that communion, there's edification and building up. And it's because we're all under the same grace that God has given. So why would I do that? Why would we do that? Why, why would we come home from work, stay dressed, and come to church? Because when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, there is an inner motivation. The physical would say you need sleep. And the, the inner would say, wow, this is glorifying God in the highest way. Speaking words that surround his throne. Pretty good, huh? Because, you know, every moment we get, we are commanded in revelations to praise and worship God. And you know what? Praising and worshiping God has no time clock. It has no time clock. As a matter of fact, it says praise should be in a, in a song. Praise should be continually, is it either mind or mouth? My mouth. I should be praising the Lord continu continuously with my mouth. And if it says mind, then I should be continuously praising the Lord in my mind. See? Another question I have in this Are You Prepared <coughs> is, and I love this, because he said, how do you walk on water? And he told me. And then he said this, because he said, I know you've been many places. But he said, is it worth the trip? Is it worth the trip? <coughs> now, I'll tell you what. Whenever we go anywhere, whenever I've gone anywhere, we pray first. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would go before us. And that he would use us in ways that we, didn't even, we couldn't even comprehend. Whether it was with the teenagers, <coughs> whether it was here, whether it was there, whether it was to Kentucky, whether it was to Myrtle Beach, whether it was to Billy Graham, wherever it is, Lord, you use us. And you use us in a way that we can't even comprehend because we know I can only do everything through you who gives me strength. See? And I just kind of figured out why the Lord had me pray or had me preach this message in this particular series. Are you prepared to go? Because you'll never be prepared to go, but through him, you'll always be ready to go. And he will give you everything you need to go. As long as you understand. It's not you. That's going to make the trip successful. It's him. Whenever I've gone on a missions trip. We pick a verse. That's our theme. And every morning we repeat that verse and we pray. And we pray that God would use us according to that verse. And why is a trip worthwhile? Because someone goes before me that is greater than I am. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now Matthew 12, 42, uh, you were probably saying, when's he getting to the verse? Matthew 12, 42 talks about the Queen of Sheba. And she traveled 800 miles to hear Solomon. But I love this, because in Matthew it says, but something greater than Solomon was there. You know, I've, I've had some people say, wow, you drove to New Jersey? Uh-huh. Why? Because something greater was there. Because something greater was there. See? I, I loved it because it was kind of interesting, because when we went to Kentucky... I think it was a year ago. Was that a year ago? About a year ago or so? Maybe two years? A year ago. We're, we're down there, and I get a text from Don saying, we're on our way to Kentucky. This was after he preached the message here. They got in the car, and they went to Kentucky. 
Why? Because something greater was there. Because something greater was there. I, we don't know what. We just know that the Lord's saying, walk to me, Peter. Get out of the boat. Get into the car. Drive a thousand miles. Why, Lord? Something greater is there. What is it? Me. I'm there. And I'm going to reveal my presence to you. And I'm going to reveal <coughs> who I am through other people. So Queen of Sheba, she went 800 miles to hear Solomon, but it wasn't Solomon she was going to hear because something greater was there. You know, I, I find it interesting, the Lord just said this to me, he goes, he goes, people leave thinking they're looking for something better, but the greater is right where they were at. And I went, oh. See, it can be, it can be a two-edged sword. Sometimes we go thinking, oh, this is going to be wonderful. But if, again, we don't lift it up to the Lord, we don't, we don't ask him, Father, go before me. Reveal to me. You know? I had no idea we were going to New Jersey. And then all of a sudden I, I was looking at something, and this thing that <coughs> Rabbi Khan was having showed up, and I went, wow. And the Lord said, you need to go. And I said, Lord, that's New Jersey. And he goes, yeah. He says, but something greater is there. Something greater is there. And I went, wow. And, and we found something. We found the Lord. We found the Lord in this, this warehouse that looked like Jerusalem. And we found the Lord as he moved and the Holy Spirit moved through this congregation and, and displayed the unconditional love of God for somebody they didn't even know. See, get out of the boat. Go to New Jersey. Go to New Jersey. I always, when, whenever I go somewhere, I run it by the Lord, and I said, Lord, I have an expectation that something greater is going to be where I go because something always is greater where I go. Whether, whether it's, it doesn't even have to be in the place we're going. It can be in the hotel breakfast place at breakfast bringing somebody to the reality of Jesus Christ and salvation. And that's happened many times in many hotels, right? many times and then we go to what we're going to and we're going wow this is wonderful and lovely but the hotel breakfast was better because there was an experience <coughs> for people that have no ability no strength but are under the grace of God to minister to those that have no ability and no strength but are under the grace of God that for some reason are there with us. And they went because something greater was there. <coughs> See? Something greater is there. Here's what I think. I'm going to meet God through the Spirit. Someone greater is going to meet you there. Somebody greater is going to meet you there. Well, I don't feel like going to church this Sunday. Uh, it's been a long week. But someone greater is going to meet you there. See? Well, I don't know if I want to go to Wednesday night service. I'm tired. But someone greater is going to meet you there. Well, Bible study, I don't know. But someone greater is going to meet you there. 
See, that's the attitude we need to have. Someone greater is going to meet me there. I can't wait. Who's it going to be? <coughs> and the Holy Spirit says, me. I'm going to meet you there. And I'm going to bring you closer to the Father than you were five minutes ago. You know, I, I think of Paul. Here's Paul. Thinking he's a bad dude. Killing Christians. All of a sudden, he's blinded, and he's let out in the desert to get schooled on who Jesus is. See, I never heard where Peter or where Paul said, oh, I can't believe I had to stay out in the desert. No, all I heard was him say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and... My life is not my own. It belongs to Christ. I'm the worst sinner of them all, but God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. You know, I, I never saw, I never heard, never read it in the Bible where Peter went, Dag nabbit, why did I get out of the boat? Dag nabbit's just an old-fashioned word. I decided to throw in there. It's better than the other word I would. I was getting ready to say, Dag Nabbit, why did I get out of the boat? He never said that. Why? Because the grace of Christ lifted him up. So wherever God takes you, if you put him first and you understand that you alone can't do it, and you bring your life to him, you're going to walk on water. You're going to walk on water. See why? Because we're walking by faith and not by sight. I, I, uh, I've been overseas a couple of times. Don't, don't know how the money came forward. Don't know how it happened. But I knew I had to go because something greater was there. Some, there was something greater there to meet me. And it was just amazing to see that as I, as I w went over there, the Lord said, walk on water. And I went, Lord, there's no ocean over here. He goes, no, that's not walking on water. Walking on water is living in communion with him and those like me. That's what walking on water is. It's a constant communion with the grace and the mercy of God. A matter of fact, I love it because one verse, and I can't remember where it says, but it says his banner over me is love. And if we're all sitting <coughs> at a banqueting table here on earth and we're communing around the Holy Spirit and our language is kingdom language, and our display is kingdom affection. And we know it's, we can't even understand what's happening. But we know that it's him and not me. And so we keep walking on water. Being focused on the cross. Never taking our eyes off of him. And that's, what's makes it, that's what makes us ready to go. Ready to go. And so, again, put this in the content and context you think you need to put it in. But there's something greater waiting for you. So don't hesitate. If God's telling you, you need to go. Whether it's church, Bible study, whatever. If it centers around him, then you need to go. See? And you need to learn to walk on water. Father, we thank you for this message, Lord Jesus. Maybe somebody out there has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Simple prayer goes like this. Father God, thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord, and what he did on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, I want to accept you into my life this evening. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. 
Forgive me of the sinful ways I have lived, Father. Lord Jesus, transform me and save me. Sanctify me, Father, in the plan that you have for me that's been written out long before the foundation of the earth, Father. Forgive me for ignoring it, Lord. Forgive me for ignoring you. Again, Father, save my soul. Come into my heart. Save me, Father. Now, if you've never said that prayer, and that was your prayer tonight, then I would love to have you message me because I'd love to get a hold of you just so I can kind of walk you through a couple of things. But you know what? There's going to be a time where he's going to say go. And, and you know what? Just remember this. Someone greater than your expectation is there to meet you. Father, we thank you, love you, and praise you, Lord. Thank you for this time. There is men's Bible study Friday. In your precious name we pray, Lord, amen and amen.